Hey, I'm Liz and here are six of my picks for the best budget tents under a hundred bucks, ranging from one person tents all the way up to six person tents. But for the sake of this video, I also bought and tested only the two person models of each tent to make the comparison a little bit more fair. These are the tents that you'll be seeing in this video. Here's a little bit of a teaser of some graphs and charts that you'll be seeing as well. And with that, let's get straight into the first test, which is the ease of setup and pack away. Let's start with the setup timings, and here's how long each tent took me to set up, including staking and guying out the tents, starting with the fastest to set up. There are two pop-up tents in this video, the Coleman Pop-Up and the Teton Sports Vista Quick Tent, and these were the quickest to set up. The Coleman Pop-Up literally just pops open the moment you remove the black strap holding the tent together. And after staking down and guiding out the entire tent, the setup timing comes in at just one and a half minutes. As for the Vista, it doesn't pop up the same way. You gotta lay it on the ground first and then push down on this center hub here to make the tent pop up. After that, you gotta set up the rain fly, stick down the vestibules plus the rest of the tent and guy it out too. And this entire process takes about three and a half minutes. The rest of the tents aren't pop-up tents, they're just regular tents. And the quickest one is the Coleman Sundurm coming in at just five and a half minutes. To set up the tent body, it's just two poles crisscrossing over each other, and the last pole is to go right down the center of the partial rain fly, which is then pretty easy to secure over the tent body. After that, there are only two guidelines, no vestibules at all, and this is the simplest possible dome tent setup, which is why it didn't take very long. The Elks Mountaineering Lynx comes right after at about six and a half minutes. This tent has a simple two pole setup, so that's pretty simple as well, but unlike the Sundurm, it has a full length rain fly, two vestibules to be set up as well, and four extra guidelines, so it took about a minute more. The Teton Sports Mountain Ultra took the same time as the Lynx, also about six and a half minutes. It also has two main poles for the tent body, but it has one extra pole compared to the Lynx, which which is this short gray pole that goes on top of the tent. The rest of it is basically the same setup, like full length rain fly, two vestibules, and also four extra guidelines. The slowest tent to set up is the Hike and Bike Zion. It's pretty similar to the Lynx and the Mountain Ultra, with the full length rain fly and all, but here's the biggest difference. Underneath the rain fly, we have these tie downs, which I had to manually tie to the poles. There are four of these around the tent, so that's why this tent took the longest, coming in at about seven and a half minutes. On the other hand, every single one of the other tents in this video use Velcro instead of tie downs, which is much more user friendly and takes less time. As for the pack away timings, here's how long each tent took me to pack away back into the carry bag starting with the fastest. Again, the Coleman pop-up is by far the quickest tent to pack away, coming in at under two minutes because I could literally just pack the tent body, ring fly, and the poles up together just like this. Basically, there's very minimal folding and packing. The Vista is also pretty quick because once you press down on these grey poles at the top, all the poles actually fold down nicely without me doing very much, and I didn't have to unsleeve and pack them away separately. I just needed to fold the poles and the tent body up together. But the biggest difference is that I had to fold and pack the rainfly up separately, which took me an extra minute. The rest of the non-pop-up tents took a little longer because I had the extra step of removing all the poles and packing them up separately. The Sundurm was a little bit quicker at about 5 minutes because it has the smallest rain fly, so therefore the least fabric to pack away. It also has a top loading carry bag with the biggest opening. The other three tents took about the same time between 6.5 to 7 minutes because they have much more fabric from, you know, the full rain fly and extra vestibules, so there's basically more to pack away. On top of that, these three tents have side-loading carry bags, so smaller openings. And with that, for the ease of setup and pack away, here's how I rated each of my budget tents, starting with the best. For spaciousness, I looked at four things. One, the peak height. 
two, how vertical the side walls are, three, the base area inside the tent, and four, the vestibule area outside the tent. Starting with the first point, here's the peak height of each of these budget tents, from the highest to the lowest. The sundome has the highest peak height of 48 and a half inches, and I could fit even a 9 inch mattress, still with a few inches of space above me. But of course, that's only because I'm not very tall at just 5 foot 3. So I'd recommend a mattress of no more than about 6 inches for most of these tents, especially if you're taller than I am. Here's what a 6 inch mattress looks like in the links. I've got plenty of headroom left over. Here's what it looks like in the Mountain Ultra, also with lots of headroom left over. When it comes to design, I'm fine with the same 6 inch mattress, and there's maybe about 2 inches of headroom left. For me, it's definitely still comfy, but I wouldn't recommend this if you're taller. Instead, I'd go for a mattress that's maybe 4 inches thick instead, and here's what it looks like. The same goes for the Vista, it was fine for me with a 6 inch mattress, but that left only a couple of inches of headroom. And the pop-up tent has the lowest peak height, so even with a 4 inch pad, my head was very nearly touching the top of the tent. So I'd recommend something thinner, maybe 3 inches or below. For the next point, I looked at how many vertical walls each tent has, and here's what I found. Most of these tents are just regular dome tents with no vertical walls. There were two exceptions, one of them being the Mountain Ultra, where you get the peak height throughout the entire width of the tent. That's because it has an extra pole right at the top of the tent, which holds the tent body up nicely, with not just two grommets, but a pole clip as well. This gives you awesome vertical sidewalls. This is what it looks like from the outside of the tent. Notice that it really is almost vertical from the top all the way down to the ground. The same goes for the Zion, it has an extra short pole at the top that holds the tent body up as well. On the other hand, if you look at a simple two-pole tent body setup like the Lynx, which doesn't have the extra pole at the top, notice how the walls slant inwards and get really narrow at the top instead. That way, you lose a lot of livable space at the top. For the inner tent, here's my personal measurements of the length, width, and the inner base area of each tent, and I've arranged them from biggest to smallest. I'll talk a little bit more about which tent you should buy depending on your height later in the recommendations, but for now, just take note that there's actually not too big a difference when it comes to the inner base area. And that's why we gotta include the outer vestibule area as well, and here's all the details that you need. The vestibule area is the total area of both vestibules because each of these tents have two vestibules. And for the total base area, I just combined the inner tent base area and the outer vestibule area, and here's the final tally from the biggest to the smallest. Now, there's a huge difference between the largest and the smallest budget tent. And with that, here's how I decided to rate all these tents for spaciousness. For features, I'm going to start by looking at the door quality of each tent, and here's a quick table of info. Basically, I like to look out for the number of doors, the size of each door, the zipping and stowing experience, which is basically just overall user-friendliness. I think the doors on the Vista are the best, because there are two of them. These are easily the biggest doors of all the tents in this video. The zipping experience is great, very smooth with no snags, and you can stow the door fabric away with these two toggles at the bottom. Then we have the Lynx, also with two doors, both a little smaller than the Vista, but still bigger than the rest, also with a snag-free zipping experience and toggles to stow the door fabric. Next, I really like the doors on the Mountain Ultra, because each door has its own door pocket instead of toggles, and this is the only tent that has door pockets. So when the door is open, you can stuff the fabric of the door into the door pocket, and this is much quicker and more user-friendly. However, as much as I would have liked to rank this door first, it's just not as big as the Vista or the Lynx. The Zion comes after the Mountain Ultra because the size of the doors is exactly the same, with the same snag-free zipping experience, but less user-friendly toggles instead of door pockets. Now we get to the single door tents like the Sundome. 
Basically, only one door, not quite as big, and this rain flap on the outside sometimes gets in the way of the zippers, making it feel a little bit snaggy. And the pop-up tent has the smallest door of all, and it comes with two different layers for the window and the door. So when I was inside the tent and I wanted to zip the door up, I first had to unzip the window before I could do so. A little bit annoying if you ask me. Now, moving on to the storage options of each tent, here's another quick summary for you. These three columns are for storage, and this last column here is for the power port, if that's what you're looking for. I found most of these budget tents to be pretty okay in terms of storage for a two-person tent, and the only one that didn't quite make the cut was the pop-up tent. It has only one pocket that's been split into two. This pocket isn't even very big, there's no lantern loops, no gear lofts, and no power port as well. Based on both the door quality plus the storage options in each of these tents, here's how I rated all of them for features. For ventilation, I'm going to look at the amount of mesh each tent has, the number of vents, the amount of rainfly ventilation, and also an overnight condensation test. And we'll start with the amount of mesh each tent has with the rainfly off. Now, easily the two most ventilated tents are the Mountain Ultra and the Zion. If you take a look at both these tents, notice how much mesh there is on each of them. If I had to guess, I would say that maybe about 80% of each of these tents are covered in mesh. Another reason to have this much mesh is that you get 360 unblocked views all around the entire tent. In second place, we have the Vista. It also has 360 views, but I noticed that there's a little bit more fabric at the bottom of the tent. I would say that maybe 70% of this tent is mesh. Next up, we have the Lynx. There's a huge difference between this tent and the three previous ones. The Lynx actually has quite a lot of fabric, especially at the length of the tent and even at the width. You no longer get unblocked views, there's just two mesh panels at the width and two windows at the length. Mm, I'd say this is more like 40% mesh. Now we have the Sun Dome with the same layout as the Lynx, just with even less mesh. I'd go with 30% mesh on this one. And in last place, we have the pop-up tent with just a few mesh panels up top. I'd say this is about 20% mesh. Here's a table summarizing everything that I just talked about. Of course, I'm just literally eyeballing the amount of mesh on each tent and making these estimates here. As for vents, Here's a table summarizing the total number of vents as well as the number of vents that I could leave open in the heavy rain. The Mountain Ultra comes in first because it has four built-in rainfly vents. But because of the angle of the top two vents though, I couldn't leave these open during my heavy rain test. That leaves the other two rainfly vents, one in each vestibule. Depending on the angle of the rain, you might be able to leave these open. And I really like these two vents because they're the only vents in this video that can be opened and shut from the inside of the tent. Next up, we have the Zion with just two rainfly vents, but these can be left open in the heavy rain. Notice that unlike the Mountain Ultra, the vents of the Zion face vertically downwards, which really helps prevent rain from getting in. The Sun Dome has one small ground vent and I could leave this open in the rain. Then we have the Lynx with two rainfly vents which can't be left open in the rain or you'll get these two huge puddles of water right in the middle of the tent. And that's because the vents aren't quite facing downwards as much as they should be. Same goes with the Vista. It has only one vent with the same facing as the Lynx, so I couldn't leave this open in the rain. And the pop-up tent has no vents at all. For rainfly ventilation, well, that mostly depends on the length of the rainfly, and here are the details. Usually, partial rainflies have a little more ventilation, and here's why. With the rainfly over the sun dome, it protects the two mesh walls, and at the same time provides some ventilation through these walls as well. As for the tents with the full rainflies, I usually just like to make sure that I can pull the rainfly away from the tent body at all four sides. And most of the full rainfly tents here could do that, and these are the Mountain Ultra, the Zion, and the Lynx. 
However, the Vista was not able to do so, and as you can see here, there's no state loop at the width of the tent to pull the rainfly away. And the pop-up tent has a really tiny rainfly, but all it does is cover the ceiling mesh panels. There aren't any gaps in the rainfly, so no rainfly ventilation here. As for the condensation test, I also slept in all these tents overnight, even the one-person versions that I have. And I didn't have any condensation issues in all of them, even the tents with the full rainflies. I think it's because I'm not very big, but if you're much taller and bigger than I am, then you might have some condensation in the one-person tents, so you could upgrade to a two-person or bigger tent instead. And here's how I rated each tent for ventilation. For rain protection, I put each of these tents through a one hour rain test, and here are the results without me adding any additional waterproofing. The Mountain Ultra was the best tent I had against rain. I put it through not just a one hour heavy rain test like this, but it even continued to rain lightly to moderately for another 12 hours or so, and not a single drop of water got into the tent. I'll give you more details later in the recommendations. As for the Vista, after a one hour rain test from the water hose, I noticed a few drops of water leaking in through the seam between the buffed up flooring and the tent body. Thankfully, this is a pretty easy fix with some seam sealant. The same thing happened with the links, the same seam wasn't taped, so notice how the water has seeped into the seam. And guess what? On the other side of this seam, the links has these pockets attached to it, which basically soaked right through and leaked quite a bit into the tent, so you definitely need more thorough seam taping here. Next, we have the Sun Dome, which started leaking after just 30 minutes because again, instead of taping the seams, Coleman inverted the seams instead, which usually don't work in heavy pouring rain. And of course, the Sun Dome has only a partial rainfly, so even with seam sealing, it's not going to be as good as the Vista or the Lynx. Now, you might be surprised that the Zion comes after the Sun Dome. Reiterate, but here's why. Unfortunately, the Zion has tub floors that are not high enough. They should be at least 10 inches high, like the Mountain Ultra, but they're only 5 to 6 inches high. So because of the back splashing in the rain and this super huge rainfly gap, there were quite a few droplets of water and even dirt that got into the tent. And the low tub floor isn't something that I've been able to fix at all, so I wouldn't recommend this tent for heavy rain. And the Coleman pop-up tent is basically just kinda useless in rain. Here's what the inside of the tent looks like after just 50 minutes of heavy rain. Everything's pretty much soaked. Here's a quick summary of what I just explained. Here are the two new columns on the fixes you can do to each specific tent, and what type of rain the tent can be used in, from heavy rain all the way to no rain at all. And here's how I rated each budget tent for its rain protection. For quality, I looked at the flooring, the tent body, the rainfly, the poles, zippers, mesh, stitching, seam taping, and the warranty provided. Let's start with the flooring, and here's a quick summary of the flooring material in each tent, starting with the best. I found that most budget tents have floorings made of either polyethylene or at most 75D polyester like most of the tents on this list. So I was very pleasantly surprised that my Mountain Ultra came with a 150D polyester flooring which is at least double the thickness of any other tent here. Moving on to the rest of the tent body and the rainfly, here's another quick summary for you. The Mountain Ultra once again tops the list with a double thick tent body and a rainfly made of ripstop which is more resistant to tearing and ripping than regular polyester. And the rest of the tents range from 63D to 75D polyester. As for the quality of the poles, you guessed it, here's another summary for you. The first three budget tents have better quality aluminum poles. All of these are 7000 series aluminum poles, and the last three budget tents have fiberglass poles instead, which aren't as strong as aluminum. As for the 
quality of the zippers, I didn't really see such a big difference in each of these tints. Basically, all the zippers are no brand zippers. As for the quality of the mesh that you'll find in each tent, here are the details. The better quality tents tend to have micro mesh, which is meshed with much smaller holes to keep out even the smallest of bugs, and that's the Mountain Ultra, the Vista, and the Lynx. The Zion also has mesh that looks like micro mesh, but honestly, it didn't feel as smooth and silky as the first three tents. And both my Coleman tents have regular mesh that can keep out mosquitoes, but not smaller bugs like Noceums. As for the quality of stitching in each tent, here's the breakdown of what I saw. The better quality budget tents, so the first four here, didn't have as many loose threads as the not so good quality Coleman tents. These tents also had consistent stitching all around the tent, while both the Coleman tents had more inconsistent stitching that kind of ran out of line, and here's a seam in the syndrome that even looks like patchwork. As for the seam taping, the Mountain Ultra is the only tent that doesn't require you to seal the seams before using the tent. As for the rest of the tent store, the Vista, Lynx, and Zion all had at least taped flooring and corner seams, and the only problematic seam is mainly the top of the top floor seam. As for the Coleman tents, however, the pop-up tent had seam taping that wasn't very well applied, which was a big reason as to why the seams were leaking in the rain test. And the Sun Dome doesn't have a single taped seam inside the tent. They were only inverted, like this. As for the warranty, the better quality budget tents tend to provide lifetime warranties, while Coleman's warranty is just one year. So, based on everything we just talked about, here's how I rated all the tents based on quality. portability, I'm first going to show you the weight of all the tents, and they're basically all about the same weight, ranging from the lightest at 6 pounds and the heaviest at 7 pounds. And here's the pack size of each tent, and also the volume of each tent, so you can roughly visualize the smallest to the biggest tents here. The first four tents are roughly about the same size, but the last two tents are both pop-up tents, so they're quite a bit bigger. The Vista is much longer than your regular Sundome tent, and the pop-up tent comes in this super huge circle, which can be inconvenient for storing away. And with that, here's how I rated each budget tent for portability. And finally, here are the overall results. It cost me slightly over 600 bucks to buy all these tents, and I do not return them after testing them. I also spent about a week testing each tent, so if this video has been helpful, please help me hit that like button. It shows YouTube that you're liking this video and that I'm not full of crap, and it'll spread this video out to more people. Thank you, and I really appreciate it. As usual, I color-coded the ratings, green is for good, yellow is not so good, and red's pretty bad. Based on this weightage at the top here, I tried to make these scores as equal as possible across all the different tests, and here's the overall score for each of these budget tents. And this is a brand new rating to pricing graph. The vertical axis is basically just the overall rating that I just showed you. The horizontal axis is the price of each of the two-person models, and here's where each of the two-person budget tents sits on this graph. The prices here are what I found on the official brand website, so basically the MSRP. I know that this is supposed to be a video about the best budget tents under 100 bucks, and it still is because the one-person models of these tents here range from just 95 bucks to 110 bucks MSRP, so I still think that these tents fit the theme. But before you buy any of these, I'll talk you through my recommendations first, and here's everything that I'm going to go through with you to help you pick the best one for yourself. Let's start with my top pick, and that's easily the Mountain Ultra. It not only has the best overall score, but it's also my best all-rounded tent. Notice that the Mountain Ultra has only one yellow for the ease of setup and takedown, 
On the other hand, all my other tents have yellows and at least two, some three, some even six, and some are just straight out not so good. The Mountain Ultra also has the best scores for ventilation, rain, and quality, and I'm gonna go through all these right now starting with the best for rain pick. There are three reasons why this tent works so awesomely in the rain. First, it has the perfect tub floor height, measuring about 10 inches at the width, which usually has more issues in rain, because the rain fly can't be pulled away from the tent body too much. Check this out. After the heavy rain test, I lifted the rain fly up and take a look at the tent body. Notice that the height of the tub floor was more than enough to prevent water from getting into the tent. Now, let's compare this to the Lynx, which has a tub floor of 7 inches at the width. This is me lifting the rain fly, and the entire tub floor is completely wet. And notice this seam at the top of the tub floor. This seam wasn't taped, and the tub floor wasn't high enough, so water seeped into the seam and then into the tip. Now let's check out the Zion, which has a tub floor of only 5 inches. And of course, it got completely drenched. The mesh on top was damp as well, and I found quite a few droplets of water and even dirt inside the tent. Now the second reason, because the tub floor is high enough, you don't have to seal any seams yourself, and the Mountain Ultra is the only tent that you don't have to do any waterproofing prep work before using it. And third, it has these two vestibule vents which can be open and shut from the inside, which is super handy in the rain. The Mountain Ultra is also one of the best budget tents that I have for summer. It has a whole ton of mesh if you remember this chart that I showed you back in the ventilation test. The Zion has an equal amount of mesh, but I didn't pick it because I felt that the mesh in the Zion wasn't as high quality. Here's why. Here's me in the Mountain Ultra, and check out how the mesh looks like. It's so high quality that it looks almost transparent, and I could look out with completely unblocked views. Now check out what the Zion looks like. Notice how the mesh is a little bit more translucent, and not quite so transparent. This makes the Zion not so great for things like stargazing. Look at the Mountain Ultra, then look at the Zion. The difference is subtle, but it's there for sure. Now, for my best value for money pick, we've also got the Mountain Ultra, and I'll show you why using this graph. The Mountain Ultra has the highest MSRP here, but it's also the best performing of all the other tents. But here's the kicker. 140 bucks may be the MSRP on the official T20 Sports website, but Amazon usually has really great prices for this tent, which is much lower, and I bought my two-person Mountain Ultra for 115 bucks. This actually makes the Mountain Ultra insane value for money, especially if you can snag it for less on Amazon. And for that price, you get the best possible quality in a budget tent, hands down. If you missed it, please check out the quality test for all the details on this. Now, I'd recommend the two-person Mountain Ultra over the one-person if you can spare the extra 30 bucks and the extra weight. The two-person can fit an entire queen bed. It has five and a half inches more headroom, one extra vestibule, one extra door, lots of cross ventilation through the doors, and I could even pull the rain fly away from the tent body at the woods of the tent, unlike the one-person model. And the two-person packs down to just 20% bigger than the one-person. For my runner-up pick, I'll have to go with the Lynx. While it scored almost a whole point less than the Mountain Ultra, it's still a pretty decent tent overall, and there's one specific category that it did better in. Spaciousness. And the Lynx is actually my top pick for tall folks. Here's why. The biggest issue with the Mountain Ultra is actually the length of the tent. It has one of the shortest lengths of all the tents here coming in at just 6.8 feet or 81 inches. On the other hand, the Lynx has the longest length coming in at 7.4 feet or 89 inches. If you're close to 6 feet tall and camping alone in the Mountain Ultra, you could sleep a little more diagonally across the tent and still be fine, but if you're 6 feet and above or camping with someone else, this tent will be a little too short for you. In that case, you may want to go with the Lynx instead. Or you could go with a 3-person or 4-person Mountain Ultra instead, if you don't mind the extra weight, of course. There's another reason that the Lynx beats the Mountain Ultra, and that's in the off-season. Because of how little mesh there is on this tent, it's actually better for keeping the heat in 
for shoulder season camping rather than something made almost entirely of mesh like the Mountain Ultra. So those are the two reasons you might go for the Lynx instead. Again, I'd recommend the two-person Lynx over the one-person if you can spare the extra cash and weight. The two-person can fit almost an entire queen bed, it has 10 inches more headroom, one extra vestibule, bigger vestibules, one extra door, bigger doors, and the rain flag can be pulled away at all sides as well. Basically the same reasons I picked the two-person Mountain Ultra over the one person that I went through just a minute ago. For a budget pick, we've got these two tents. Both are from Coleman, both cost much less than 100 bucks, but the clear winner is easily the Sundome. It's about 30% cheaper than the pop-up, but still performs better. When you look at the Sundome along with the more expensive budget tents, it actually doesn't do too well but on its own, I think it's a very functional tent for the price. It didn't have any ratings in red and came in first for its peak height of 48 and a half inches. Rainfly ventilation, thanks to these two humongous rainfly vents that can be left open in rain, and it's the only tent in this video that has a power port. And if you need a family camping tent on a budget, the six person sender actually comes in at about a hundred bucks, which is super affordable. I love that I could not just stand upright at the peak height, I'm also able to stand upright on thick air mattresses as well and even bounce around on them, still with headroom left. The pop-up tent came in first for setup and pack away. I love how it pops out of the carry bag in seconds, and that's because the poles are pre-attached, the rain fly is pre-attached, and even the guy lines are pre-attached. And for the pack up, it does take some practice at first, but after that, I could get mine folded in seconds as well. But if you're looking for a better, all-rounder pop-up tent, I'd go with the Vista instead. If you look at all these scores, the Vista actually beats the pop-up in almost every single test. It scored a little lower for the setup and takedown though, and that's because instead of just 15 seconds like the Coleman, it takes two minutes to pop open and also secure the ring fly over the tent. And instead of one minute to pack up like the Coleman, this takes two minutes instead. But still, this is much quicker than all the non-pop-up tents. For the most portable tent in this video, we've got the Zion. This is the only tent that comes with a footprint, so you can set it up with just the footprint, the pole, and the rainfly. You don't have to use the tent body at all, and this setup weighs about 4.3 pounds. But honestly, this isn't even all that lightweight. I still think it's more of a car camping tent rather than a backpacking tent. Overall, decent tent, best in portability, but when you compare the rest of the scores to the Mountain Ultra, the Lynx and even the Vista, it's not that good, sadly. Please help me smash that like button if this was useful. Thank you for watching this, you're awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.